First of all, we must be aware of our threat. Indeed, we could easily take things as they come and wait until the monetary system collapses, which will obviously happen or is actually happening. When the states will be themselves insolvent, it's more than likely that international finance will propose a new system based on a global standard which will be managed by a super sultan bank on a global level. The idea may appear to be attractive and due to the desperate state of their condition, many of us will obviously be attracted to it. A global currency would definitely be a good solution, subject it would be managed by a truly democratic organization. However, the only international organization which could actually claim this mission is the United Nations whose working processes are far from democratic. Make no mistake, democracy remains a great idea that humans are not able to embody yet. It's very foreseeable a super bank like IMF, the World Bank or the Bank of International Settlements will be appointed on the same logic as now because it remains in the same hands. The financial dictatorship will then be able to bluntly impose its condition over the people who will accept it, however, because they will be still stunned by the shock of the crisis they will have undergone and on. That is to say how the situation requires our vigilance. Being well informed about all that, we are now able to act on three levels. Let's exert constant pressure on our elected representatives and candidates in order to get the legitimate recovery of the power of money creation by the nations and at the same time, the total withdrawal of this power from the banks by abolishing the principles of double currency and fractional reserve. It means having no more than a single currency issued by a mandated public organization under democratic control. Do not have any doubt about this. You will be faced to a wall because the existing political class entirely agrees with the economical and financial ideology which is expressed by the above-mentioned logic. Without its full acceptation, the laws and treaties which draw the rules we suffer would never have been written or voted. The political class will consequently put forward the strength of these laws and treaties or will try to confuse things with the technical jargon. Don't be impressed and always come back on the illegitimacy of these laws and treaties that drain people's sovereignty and betray the true nature of money. Have you heard about complementary local money? Well, you must be informed that a worldwide citizenship movement for local complementary money is increasing since the beginning of the century. What is it exactly? It consists in local account units in addition to the national currency. These units are issued and managed by networks of citizens whose rules are defined by them. As an example, we will now present two experiences. One is the Credito in Argentina, which allowed the Argentine people to face the crisis in 2001. The other one is the Ithaca Hour, which has been put into circulation for ethical reasons in the small city of Ithaca in the state of New York. Se llama crédito, es un papelito, ¿sí? Y ese papelito te sirve para comprar lo que uno desee comprar. Así sea ropa, alimento. La gente se vuelca acá, vende en principio vende sus cosas usadas, su ropa, su calzado, otra gente que vende artículos como licuadoras o, o videos grabadoras o televisores, lo que tengan. Comienzan así, lo cambian por alimento. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Tenés bolsita? Sí, me parece. Bueno, 
eh, la economía en Argentina está quebrada y esto es una economía paralela. Nos manejamos con nuestros créditos porque no tenemos los pesos, no hay peso en Argentina. Entonces este es nuestro, nuestro peso, nuestro trabajo. Lo que hemos sencillamente generado es una herramienta... We simply generated a tool of exchange. You can call it money, but that wasn't our intention. We simply use it to represent the value of work. It's what we've always done. When I had a job, they paid me in money. And with this money, I could buy bread from the baker. I was bartering. I bartered my work for bread. I used money as a tool. Today I do exactly the same. I work and, in exchange, they give me a ticket that's worth the value of my work. And with this ticket I go to a bartering fair and buy the same bread. I exchange my work for bread. The only difference is the tool. Previously we had the peso. When it disappeared, we asked ourselves, what can we do? And we invented a new currency. Simply put, we said, does this have a value? Do you trust the credit that I'm offering you? Do you agree that it's worth what I'm telling you it's worth? Do you give it credibility? If yes, okay, you'll accept it. Aparte de tomártelo como un trabajo, esto es una gran familia. ¿Entendés? Cuando no venís porque te duele algo, ya te están llamando porque no viniste. Y eso es lindo, te hace sentir bien, te hace sentir que no estás solo, ¿no? Yo tengo, eh, mi esposo trabaja en la construcción, hace casas. Mi hijo está estudiando Derecho, es estudiante, así que no tiene trabajo. Ella le paga la facultad al hijo con esto, le ayuda mucho en la casa. O sea, es loable, es mi, con lo que yo trabajo acá en el nodo, llevo todo lo que necesito para mi casa, para comer, para vestirnos, para artículos de limpieza, todo. Y con el ingreso de mi esposo puedo pagar lo que se hace con dinero que, que acá no se puede hacer. La figura del banco que nosotros tenemos es una empresa... We commonly see the bank as a business that makes money with money. But in the barter network, we see the bank as an entity that produces goods and services through the access to a tool called credit. But we aren't going to build a new financial system. Our credits are loaned without interest. We don't say like the IMF does, I'll lend you 100, but you must pay back 150. No, we lend 100 and we say, pay back 100 in goods, services or skills that the network needs. Con el crédito que recibimos de la gente del par, hemos trabajado y tenemos casi 50 personas trabajando con 30.000 créditos que se los dio, de los cuales hemos gastado 18 y hemos generado 50. Esta red permite que nosotros manejemos nuestro propio dinero a través de la producción. O sea, nosotros producimos y podemos ayudar también. Y fíjese usted que nosotros a la transformación de esta prenda, nosotros nos permite fabricar, que ustedes si lo quieren ir a ver abajo lo van a poder firmar después, fabricar eh, factura, churro y pan para los comedores escolares. Y para los comedores de los chiquitos, o sea, nos permite ejercer la solidaridad que realmente es para lo que es la cooperativa. But I also met people who invented a currency for political reasons. In the United States, there is more than 500 communities using a local money. Itaca is one of them. In a, an economically strong country like the United States with a strong dollar, a currency that's used all over the globe, why should we have local currencies and why are local currencies spreading and, and popular in this country? I think they serve a really important need 
that is exactly a part of being a strong global economy. And so this applies around the world, all sorts of, all the interconnected countries. I think as we become more global, as we become more interconnected, as people do more and more shopping on the internet, as people you know, ship things around the world, uh, our sense of connection to where we live and how we live is lost. Uh, I, um, can I taste some um, a cane apples, please? Just a little, Athena. Thank you. <laughs> you make community. We back at the hours with our labor and our, our goodwill. That's really important to me. And Ithaca Hours like turned my life around in a way because I could use, I could trade for skills that I that I can't like sell, you know, like psychic readings or something. So I can, I got Ithaca Hours and I was able to when when we didn't have any money, I was able to feed my kids using trading for Ithaca Hours. We can keep American dollars in the community, but we have far less control over where our American dollars go once we try to keep them in our community. This shows that we're truly supporting our local businesses and our local service providers because you cannot use this particular currency outside of our community. That's two quarter hours, uh -huh. which is five dollars. One American dollar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. By calling the currency an hour, an Ithaca hour, it connects the, the exchange and the, this mechanism of exchange that we're using back to time and ultimately back to the source of value, which is the people involved and what they're bringing to the exchange. So a local currency has all these sort of eye-opening benefits. It makes us think about where value comes from in exchange. It makes us think about dollars because, again, dollars are the sort of this thoughtless, anonymous thing that we exchange. We don't think about where they come from, why are they valuable. But when you present someone with this new piece of paper called an Ithaca Hour that has fancy colors on it and beautiful drawings, and we say, well, this is money, it makes people think, well, what is money? Okay. It was started about 10 years ago, and it, the foundation was uh, to foster strength in the agricultural communities because Food is, in essence, like our, one of our primary needs. You know, we need to have food, so it's a good place to start with something as basic as that. If you come around here, I can show you the Ithaca Bank. We have an active board of directors who meets monthly to um, deal with issues of promotion and distribution of the currency. Right now, the board of directors has a whole stash of local currency printed, just like a central bank of any country would have a stash of currency printed and in reserves. And um, that currency is brought into circulation when a person calls in or fills out the form that says, um, I am able to do uh, whatever task for in exchange for local currency. The closest we come to being a banking system is that we make loans. Uh, the organization also gives grants to community organizations, to other uh, community organizations. Um, so on that small scale, we do provide financing for local entrepreneurs. Just these two examples cannot show the great diversity of currencies which are blooming here and there. But in many aspects, they illustrate the need to put the money back to its rightful place and use it according to its true nature. In all case, and beyond the often microscopic dimension of these experiments, we can see the seeds of the incredible transformation of human thought and society. It could appear as an easy-going game only, but by playing it, humans can recover their dignity by learning to reinvent the money while taking into account the common good and to ensure that democracy is something other than a word. Now it's possible to go even further in linking political and local actions. If we fail to obtain a change of the rules and treaties allowing the reappropriation of the power of money creation by the nations, at least we can put pressure on our elected representatives in order to issue at national level of a complementary currency whose purpose would be to finance everything that could improve the quality of life following the same principle as on Island B. This would make possible 
what is not possible at the moment for the simple reason that it is not profitable enough or because there is a lack of money. However, the challenge is far to be won as regaining the power on money by one way or another will not be enough. This recovery can only be the symbol of the one humans must undertake on themselves if they really want a world of peace and sufficiency. Just imagine for a second. Here we are. The nation has recovered the magic lamp. Suddenly, everything becomes possible, as if, individually, we came to gain a bingo without any limit. Will it not give to all our whims and desires free reign, while yesterday they were retained by an insufficient purchasing power? What does restrain us for the time being? It is the lack of money, isn't it? Isn't it the attainment of our desires and project not depending on the money we have? Let's be honest. Can we admit that usually, when we want something, our single reflex is to look at whether we can afford it or not? Where is our freedom and self-awareness in this matter? Have they not been kidnapped by our purse, which ultimately decides for us? If money is managing our individual life, is it surprising that finance is managing the world? Can we rebel against institutions which, after all, just reflect what is happening in each of us? If we really want a world of peace, sufficiency, of equity, we must individually initiate the change we want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world, said Gandhi. Achieve that is like touching the heart of the challenge of our time, like touching the inner revolution which consists in being able to individually and collectively decide on our future, not with the money we can get, but from a questioning. What do we want? What do we try to express through what we want? To what do we contribute? What dynamic do we feed? What is the impact on the nature and resources? Is there an alternative? In brief, all the questions which would make us free and responsible beings, rather than remaining the slaves of our desires, only restrained by the artificially orchestrated scarcity of money. What is underlined in the monetary power is much more than a purchasing power. It's our power of being, our power to be more something else than purpose manipulated by our desires, stimulated by advertising and marketing tools. The power of money creation is extremely symbolic. It is not insignificant to note that both major crises we are facing are expressed, on one hand, in the money which reflects the symbolic wealth, and on the other hand, in ecology which is the real wealth. It is not insignificant either to realize that as per our existing way of thinking, the recommended cures are contradictory, economic growth on one side and moderation on the other side. This contradiction is perfectly reflecting the one that lives in us. It is an invitation to us to ensure congruency. If we fail, we are condemned to wander in a more and more violent and unbearable world. Through money, we are urgently called to a conscience revolution.